What would you do if your survival depended on the sacrifice of others? Would you do whatever it took to survive? Imagine the loneliness of space where the lunar outpost Echo 9 stands as a solitary sentinel circling the moon. Aboard this outpost lies the Aegis, a hub of scientific curiosity and exploration. Dr. Ilara Russo, a seasoned astrobiologist often finds herself lost in the mysteries of the cosmos from the observation deck. But one day the tranquility of the station is shattered by an alarming shrill sound. An undetected colossal asteroid is hurtling towards them. Automated defenses spring to life but the asteroid is too large, too swift. The impact is devastating sending shockwaves that rip through the Aegis. The outer ring home to vital life support systems suffers the worst of the collision. Emergency protocols kick in sealing off the damaged sections. But the reality is grim. The oxygen supply is slashed by 75%. The crew is left with a chilling ultimatum. Sacrifice three members, or face the inevitable demise of all. Commander Hayes gathered the crew in the central hub. The weight of their impending decision bore heavily on their shoulders. In the cold, sterile confines of Echo 9, the crew wrestled with an unbearable choice. The hum of the space station's life support systems echoed ominously, a constant reminder of their dwindling oxygen and the harsh reality of their situation. They were a team, a family even, bound together by their shared mission, but now they found themselves torn apart by the cold arithmetic of survival. The debate was heated and emotional. Who would be chosen to make the ultimate sacrifice? What criteria could possibly dictate such a decision? They were all valuable, all essential in their own ways. Yet, they had to choose or the choice would be made for them. Dr. Russo, ever the pragmatist, proposed a methodical approach. She argued for a system based on skill sets and survival probabilities. Her voice was calm and steady but her eyes betrayed the internal struggle, a single tear flowing down her cheek. Lieutenant Jackson, the station's security officer, suggested a simple lottery. It was fair, he argued, devoid of personal bias. But his proposal was met with silence. The reality of such a random selection was too harsh, too impersonal. However, it would be 100% fair. Engineer Patel, the station's mechanical genius, remained quiet. His mind was working overtime trying to find a technical solution, a way out. But deep down he knew there was none. Communication specialist Ramirez, the youngest among them, was the first to break the silence. He volunteered. He was young, he reasoned, with no family waiting back on Earth. His sacrifice would spare the others from making that painful choice. The vote was taken. Ramirez was chosen, along with Patel and Jackson. The decision was made. The air seemed to thicken as the reality of their choice settled in, and then, a solemn farewell unfolded. There were no grand speeches, no dramatic goodbyes, just a quiet acceptance of their fate and a promise to remember them, to tell their stories when they made it back to Earth. And in the silence that followed, the heartbreaking moment of having to open the hatch to launch the three into the vastness of space. The remaining crew members were left to grapple with the echoes of their sacrifice. The spectral memory of their sacrificed friends echoed in the hollow corridors of Echo 9. Each passing moment, a stark reminder of the sacrifice made for their survival. Commander Hayes and Dr. Russo, the two remaining souls, adopted a haunting routine. They monitored the dwindling oxygen levels with a vigilance born of desperation, rationed the remaining supplies, and filled the oppressive silence with the drone of their communication attempts to Earth. The station, once teeming with life and activity, had turned into a desolate sanctuary of survival. But amidst the gloom, a glimmer of hope emerged. Far off in the distance a tiny dot of light began to grow, cutting through the vast cold expanse of space. The emergency shuttle from Earth. The sight of it sparked a renewed vigor in the hearts of the beleaguered crew, a beacon of salvation against the backdrop of their desolation. As the shuttle neared, the weight of their ordeal began to lift. The rescue operation commenced, a precisely coordinated ballet in the vacuum of space. The crew prepared for departure, their hearts pounding with anticipation, their minds filled with relief, yet shadowed by the memory of their lost comrades. The shuttle docked, its metallic hull gleaming in the lunar light, the airlock hissed open, revealing the interior of their salvation. With a final look at the crippled Aegis, Commander Hayes and Dr. Russo boarded the vessel, leaving behind the remains of their lunar outpost. The shuttle pulled away, the lunar station growing smaller in the rear view until it was nothing more than a distant speck, a silent testament to their harrowing ordeal. As Earth loomed large on the shuttle's horizon, the crew members wrestled with the trauma of their ordeal, forever scarred by the echoes of Echo 9. 
The surviving crew, battered and emotionally scarred, left behind the remains of their lunar outpost. 